Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa Tamadi, your host today, and today we're going to be looking at one of the peptides and a series that I'm doing on peptides. And make sure you do check out the other uh, episodes that I've done on various peptides. Um, hopefully, I'll put the links below if I remember to do that. Uh, so make sure you go and check those out or have a look over on my channel. Um, and we're going to be talking about epitalon today. So this is a synthetic peptide that's really capturing the attention in the realms of the anti-aging and the longevity research community. And to, today we will explore its molecular mechanisms, review some pivotal studies and discuss um, some practical um, dosing guidelines. Now, do remember this is not personalized medical advice. This is for educational purposes only. And please do your own research and work with a doctor who is qualified in this to do, you know, to do peptides. But let's dive into what is epitalon. Um, so epitalon is also known as epithalon or AEDG, which is a synthetic tetrapeptide composed of alanine, glutamic acid, aspartic acid, and glycine. It was originally developed by the Russian scientist Vladimir Kavinson, very famous um, professor uh, from Russia, who in the 1980s, it was designed to mimic the natural peptide epithalamin derived from the pineal gland. And epitalon has been studied for its uh, potential to regulate the aging processes and to extend lifespan. So what are the mechanisms of action? Well, at the cellular level, epitalon's primary mechanism involves the activation of telomerase, an enzyme that elongates tel uh, telomeres, which are the protective caps at the end of your chromosomes. Now, telomere shortening is associated with cellular aging, and by promoting telomerase activity, epitalon may help maintain chromosome, uh, chromosomal integrity and delay senescence. Senescence is when the cell cells stop replicating, they start to become, have a SAS, uh, SAS phenotype or a, a secretory uh, inflammatory se uh, phenotype, which is, you know, putting out inflammatory uh, components out into the body, which is not good. So senescence is one of the things that's, uh, you know, been studied heavily in the aging space. Now, I've also done a, a whole series that I'd love you to go and check out with Dr. Bill Andrews, who's probably the world's leading expert on telomeres, or is the world leading expert on telomere shortening. And he's been working on telomeres and how to lengthen telomeres for a very, very long time. So make sure you go and check out that series in the show notes. There'll be a three-part series that you can do a deep dive into telomeres. But back to epitalon and what it can do. Now, epitalon influences the pineal gland's function, enhancing melatonin production, which plays a really important role in regulating circadian rhythms, as we know, and possesses also very powerful antioxidant properties. It also exhibits antioxidant effects by increasing the activities of enzymes like superoxide dismutase and glutathione peroxidase thereby reducing the oxidative stress, which is a key contributor to aging and age-related diseases. Now, in vitro studies have demonstrated that epitalon can increase telomerase activity in human somatic cells, leading to telomere uh, elongation. And for instance, fibroblast cultures treated with epitalon su uh, surpassed the Hayflick limit. Uh, you know, there was a, a famous scientist, uh, Leonard Hayflick, who worked out that cells replicate only a certain amount of times before this telomere shortening thing becomes so short that it no longer can replicate. And uh, epitalon surpassed this Hayflick limit. And this is one of the absolute limiting factors on our lifespan, right? Telomeres are one of the, the, the major hurdles for us to overcome in the aging space. And so this indicates extended ex uh, cellular lifespan. Now, animal studies further support these findings. In aging mice, epitalon administration resulted in reduced chromosomal aberrations and increased antioxidant enzyme activities. It also reduced the number of spontaneous tumors and met metastasis in mice. Then that was um, you know, suggesting that there's potential oncostatic and anti-metastatic properties. Uh, moreover, epitalon has been shown to promote the recovery of morphological structures of the thymus. The thymus is a big gland that we have in our chest that uh, involutes as we get older and becomes a, a fatty infiltrate. So by the time you're my age and your late 50s, it's 
it's basically buggered and not doing anything. And this starts to decline already from your puberty onwards, your thymus. So anything that's going to help the morphological structures of the thymus is going to be very good for aging, as well as the thyroid gland. And it's... Um, hypophysiction sex demise to say that twice in, um, in chickens they did a study in chickens indicating its role in the immune system enhancement so human studies have explored epitalin's potential benefits in the elderly so in elderly patients epitalin administration led to increased telomere lengths in blood cells and improved melatonin secretion and a notable study involving patients with retinitis pigmentosa reported positive clinical effects in 90% of cases following epitalin treatment. Uh, Long-term studies indicate that epitalin may reduce mortality rates in elderly populations. I've certainly used this for my mum as well. Um, and she's 83, had a very, very, very complicated medical history. And epitalin is one of those things that I do on, on a regular basis. For example, a six-year study uh, also reported lower mortality rates and improved cardiovascular health in participants who received regular epitalin treatments compared to controls. Now, when it comes to the melatonin and circadian rhythm regulation, studies in aged rhesus monkeys, um, epitalin administration stimulated evening melatonin melatonin production and normalized cortisol rhythms, indicating a restoration of circadian patterns that are disrupted by aging. Now, when it comes to sleep quality and insomnia, by normalizing these melatonin secretions, epitalin has been associated with improved sleep quality, uh, reduced sleep latency, or how long does it take to get to sleep, and fewer nocturnal awakenings, which, you know, can be really, really um, detrimental to your health if you don't get good quality sleep and the architecture of your sleep is, is uh, you know, impaired. And, I'm, you know, I've certainly uh, dealt with that in, in the last few years looking after a disabled person. You know, when you have to get up multiple times a night, what that can do to your sleep quality is, is huge. So anything that's going to help you improve the quality of your sleep is going to be very, very important. Now, these effects are particularly beneficial for individuals experiencing age-related insomnia or disrupted sleep patterns. It's also useful for jet lag and travel fatigue. So epitalon's ability to regulate circadian rhythms makes its potential therapeutic agent for mitigating jet lag symptoms. It adjusts the body's internal clock so it can help travelers adapt more quickly to new time zones, reducing fatigue and improving alertness. For the immune system enhancement side, research indicates that epitalin can restore and normalize the function of the thymus and the thyroid glands, leading to improved immune responses. And this is particularly significant in elderly populations where the immune functions often decline. But I would say it's not even just in the elderly populations. Younger and younger people are having problems with uh, immune their immune system and immunosenescence even before their time. Um, so this is something that you may want to look into for that. Now, as far as dosing guidelines, and again, this is not personalized medical advice, and this is just as some general standard sort of um, dosing uh, regimes that are out there. Uh, epitalon is typically administered either by subcutaneous or intramuscular injections. However, there is also an oral spray version, which is a nicer way to get it, get it. Um, and that's available on Profound Health. So if you're looking for that, um, now, the standard protocol is 5 to 10 milligrams daily for 10 to 20 days, repeated one to two times a year. So this is great. You don't have to do it like forever, right? This is a, a short 10 to 10, 20 day sort of protocol, one to twice a year. The Russian protocol is 10 milligrams daily for 10 days. And there's a Ukrainian protocol out there as well, which is 10 milligrams on days 1, 5, 9, 13, and 17. And again, that oral spray, which, you know, I find is a, a much easier way to get it in. Um, so the nasal roots have also been explored, but injections remain the most effective due to the bioavailability considerations. Uh, and it is really crucial that you do talk to a uh, healthcare professional before you start epitalon therapy to determine a really appropriate protocol based on your individual health, your status and what your goals are. Now, from a safety uh, perspective, epitalon is generally really well tolerated and its reported side effects are pretty minimal. They, you know, 
the usual ones like mild injection site reactions, which can be a problem when you're getting too many of these uh, peptides, um, temporary dizziness or headaches, sometimes a little bit of fatigue. And as with any therapeutic uh, intervention, monitoring and you know professional guidance is pretty important to do. Now, epitalon presents a promising avenue in the quest for longevity. I'm really excited by this. I've been studying telomeres for a long time. Anything that can possibly extend telomeres, and I would say that the clinical research, we need more, obviously, um, because, you know, how do you measure the average length of telomeres? You know, is that really representative of all the telomeres in the body? You know, there's a lot of complicating um, sort of factors to this, but, you know, Apart from the cost of it, what are the downsides? Not much. So I think it's something that you can um, pretty pretty safely put into your protocol to, or your research to look into doing, okay? Um, and the epitalon presents a really promising avenue in the quest for longevity with mechanisms that address fundamental act, uh, aspects of cellular aging. And uh, for those interested in exploring epitalon further, uh, you know, do a deep dive, go on to PubMed, find out all the studies. And I'm going to uh, include some of the studies uh, down below in the show notes. So make sure you check all those out. And there's a couple of links down there if you're wanting to get um, access to Epitalon. Um, and I hope you found this very beneficial. So please give us a like, a subscribe, share this with someone if you found it useful. And um, let me know in the comments below, what other peptides would you like to know about? Uh, would you like a deep dive into? Or is there other er areas in the longevity world that you'd like to um, hear, uh, hear about? Then please do put it in the comments below. I do try to look at the comments and get back to people uh, as much as I can. So thanks for joining me today and we'll see you again soon.